Promiscua podcast. My name's Marina, I'm a knitter, dyer of yarn, well, dyer and spinner of yarn. Uh, I'm a designer and tech editor of Knitting Patterns. And in this podcast, I talk about crafts, mostly yarn and knitting, um, and little bits of occasional seasonal making. Um, today is going to be a slightly shorter episode just because I am all raring to go for Edinburgh Yarn Festival, which I'm going to be visiting. I'm flying tomorrow morning. Um, it's my first time going and I'm super excited. There are going to be so many people there who I want to meet. So yeah, I'm just really looking forward to it. It's going to be wonderful. I'm really sorry to anyone who isn't going and would like to be able to go. I've been there the last few years, sitting at home, looking at all the photos. Um, it's, it's really exciting that I've got to the point where I can actually allow myself to go. Um, so yes, hopefully, well I'm not going to be talking much about EYF today, so hopefully you won't feel like you're missing out. Um, but yes, so to start with, things I've finished. Um, this is a hat I was knitting last time. Um, I'm calling it the Hyalas Beanie. Um, Hyalas is the old English word for like points or angles and so I think it nicely reflects these bits. Um, the yarn is British DK by uh, Molview Yarn. Um, I bought it at Loop in London um, and I was working on this one in the last episode. And I really like how these bits of twisted rib have turned out here. And then I'm also a massive fan of these decreases because um, they, to me, they kind of look like you get on the top of a sea urchin or something. Um, I think they're really pretty, um, even though I designed it myself. Um, so I'm going to be opening test knits for this one um, probably late next week. Um, so if you're interested in test knitting, I'll put a link to my test knit sign up page um, in the description bar below uh, because like it's a nice quick knit, it's fairly easy, it's really comfy, um, and you know you can wear it as like beanie like this, but you can also wear it a little bit slouchy. Um, I've got my fringe all out of control. I'm trying to decide whether I'm going to chop my hair again and get it all spiky or whether I'm going to grow it out and have it all long. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It's always a tough decision. Um, yes, so that is my only, is that my only finished object? I think that's my only finished object since last time which is slightly discouraging because it's a hat and I was already up to like here in the last episode which was a month ago. So yeah. However, I have been working on this, which I hadn't even started last time. Um, this is my Cronblad, which I mentioned I was about to start, and I think I started it like within a couple of days of the last podcast. So it still has grown pretty quickly. And if I show you there, you can see the nice little bit of colour work at the bottom. Got my yoke there. I'm really loving how these colours have worked out. Um, with so the let me tell you about it. The yarn is my Mendip four ply, um, which is local wool from a farm about twenty miles away from here. Um, it's a woolen spun yarn, and I dye the same colours on two bases, so there's a white base and a coloured base, which means that you get these nice colour pairs. So I wanted to use this to show off the colour pairs. Um, so I'm going to be, I'm gonna, well I'm definitely going to have this one ready for display for Wonderwool, which is at the end of April in Wales, where I will be exhibiting, which is super exciting. It will be my first time exhibiting somewhere I have a booth. Um, and I've got a lot of dyeing to do for that and I'm, I'm quite excited. Um, so yes, so progress. Like I was hoping to have this ready to wear this week, but that's, that's looking unlikely to happen. I mean, I've, 
I've got longer arms than that. Um, so you can see I'm knitting my sleeves two at a time because if ever I'm able to knit things two at a time I will because I'm very very impatient um, and the idea of knitting a sleeve and then knitting exactly the same sleeve again is, is like hell to me. Um, so yeah, I've got my sleeves there. I've got my markers for my decreases, which means that I don't really have to measure. I'm, I'm not counting rows or anything, like I probably should. I'm just eyeballing where the decreases should go because, yeah, fundamentally it doesn't really matter that much. Um, so the pattern I should have mentioned already is Cronblad by Verena Kors, um, who is Sustainablist Co on Instagram and Ravelry. Um, this is a pattern I tech edited last year um, and ever since then I've wanted to knit it. Um, it looks like it's going to fit me really nicely, like I'm expecting the fit to change a little bit once I've blocked it. Um, I might end up blocking it in a hotel room in Scotland, we'll see. Um, I'm quite excited that the neckline is going to be in the lighter colour rather than the darker colour. I think that's a really nice little feature. Um, the ribbing is as written in the pattern. Um, it's half twisted rib, which I had done on this hat. Um, and it was kind of okay because there wasn't a huge amount of it and it was slightly chunkier yarn. Um, I do not enjoy half twisted rib, it's, it's like, it's hard on the hands, it's slow. I like how it looks, it does, it get, you get some really nice definition on the ribbing. Um, but it is just super slow. Um, but yeah, so fingers crossed, this will be ready soon, and then I'll be able to wear it. I'm excited for that, because it's going to be really nice, and all cosy. Um, and I think it's the lightest weight jumper I've ever knitted. I don't think I've knit a jumper that's lighter than a DK weight. Um, so yeah, I'm really enjoying this one and quite pleased with how much I've progressed. And I'm not going to let myself feel bad about the fact that it's not finished yet, because well, I've been doing loads of other stuff. Um, one thing I do have to show you um, is not really something of mine, but it's something I received in the post yesterday, um, which is something I was working on really hard towards the end of last year and the beginning of this year. And that is this, which is Making Stories. It's the first issue of their magazine, so previously they've done a few books and some digital collections. I tech edited a digital collection for them at the release just before Christmas. Um, and then this one, I, I just am completely in love with. Like, so I tech edited it, so I'm very familiar with all of the patterns and everything. Um, it's been lovely to work with all of the designers on some of the amazing patterns in here. I'll just show you a little flick through. Like, there are some beautiful things in here. Um, there are some lovely illustrations. And then lots of patterns. Um, and then my name's just down there. Oh. Um, so yes, this is the first print product, like proper print publication that I have received as tech editor and it's really, really exciting because I used to work in publishing for children's books and then magazines about aviation, which bit bit of a change in career direction there, but um, yeah. Um, but so it's just so lovely to have received this and like I, I just, well I got it yesterday, I sat on the sofa and I read the articles which are just so so lovely, like I, 
I'm really, really proud to be involved with a publication that is just like actively promoting some really good values and I just, oh, I love it. And I'm going to find you. I'm probably not meant to pick favourites because I don't know, but you know, I'm going to show you my favourite design, which is this one. Oh, I have to show you from back here because uh, of the focus of the camera. Um, so it's a jumper that's knit in iron weight, worsted weight, I think. Um, and it's, so it's in honeycomb brioche and then it's got double knitting raglan lines. And so it's completely reversible. So you then get the darker side. So you have like a light version and a dark version of the same jumper because it's the same jumper and like you've got this amazing texture and I'm just like so in love with this jumper um, and so it is going on my queue my queue is just full of jumpers it's awful like I <laughs> I'm never going to make all the jumpers I want to make I don't have enough time because I also want to focus on designing things um, but it's not, oh, it is just really nice to knit things that you never would have designed yourself um, or just to see how other people do things or to be able to do something and not have to constantly worry about checking the maths and making sure that you know what you're doing next or realising that you've forgotten that something is going to have to happen later on and you somehow have to work that out. Um, so it is really nice to work from other people's designs and I probably will continue to do so. Um, I think I'll usually try to do it um, using my yarn so I can use them as yarn samples uh, for when I exhibit at shows and things um, and also just to wear because I love wearing the knitwear. Um, and as I've said before, like I don't believe in not wearing samples. I think, well, the only exception I would say there is for like socks which you usually get a bit beaten up and you don't really want your many times worn socks being used to demonstrate like what the yarn looks like yeah uh, everything else like I will wear a lot um, because I think part of the point of samples should be to show off the yarn and that includes like how the yarn wears is it fit for the purpose that it's been used for um so like I have a pair of mittens that I knitted last year and I wear them all the time I wore them to make a snowman a couple of months ago and they were just the warmest thing ever like my hands did not get cold uh, this was in the same yarn as this one um, but it was three colors so you end up almost with triple thickness um, and so I wear those mittens all the time, and yes, I will put them on my booth, and then people can see them, and I can say, I wear these all the time, that they don't have holes in them, they haven't worn through, they insulate really well, and I think that is something that's quite important. So, yes, I got slightly sidetracked there, I was talking about the magazine. Um, so yes, I think pre-order's open for that one tomorrow, I think, and... Um, it's the first time they're doing subscriptions because it's the first time it's being done as a magazine rather than a book. Um, so I'm really, really excited about the publication and hope that it does super well because it's, it's a lovely thing. I love the colour scheme they've chosen, like it's all greens and neutrals, which is like totally my thing. Um, so yes. And now... I don't have as much like making stuff to show you as I usually do um, but I have been doing a bit of weaving recently and I'm going to show you a little bit of how I set up my loom and just some of my weaving. Um, it's, yeah, it's fairly freestyle. I'm not a super experienced weaver. I have a rigid heddle loom so not like a big floor loom or anything. Um, and I just like to you do it for using up yarn and things, so I will show you that.
So I love weaving, but it's actually been ages since I've done any. Um, I finished off one just before Christmas, um, which I had had in progress for a long time. That was a tapestry. Um, but I love weaving on my rigid heddle loom, which is this one, um, to use up bits and bobs of yarn um, that I have that I don't necessarily have enough for a whole project. So I make these little perms out of um, scrap paper and then wind them either by hand or using a drill. Um, if I have lots to do at once, I use the drill because it's a lot faster, but it makes a lot of noise and it's a bit of faff. Uh, and then I put them in my boat shuttle like this. Um, and I just like it as a way to use up these yarns. And it's a really fun way of coming up with color combinations and using like yarn that doesn't necessarily match in texture or thickness um, but that you can make work together um, and it's just so much fun to play with those colors and so this one i'm doing a fairly uh, homogeneous color scheme of gray and green um, this, oh, this yarn I'm using here is one of my first ever hand dyed yarns, um, which I have a little bit left of. Um, I've wound it very badly, which is why it's getting caught. Um, I'm actually not a very good weaver, like this is something to note, like I'm not going to teach you how to weave because I'm a terrible person to learn from, you should learn from someone who's actually good at it. And, um, but I really enjoy it, and so I'm just doing a plain weave here, sometimes I like to try with a more interesting weave pattern. Um, I'd like to do some twill coming up. Um, Grace of Babbles Travelling Yarns um, has been doing some beautiful twill lately in like a lovely burgundy colour and I'm really hoping to see that one at Edinburgh because um, I really enjoy a twill. The f last time I did twill, in fact the only time, um, I had too loose a set so the um i basically the weaving the tension wasn't tight enough i didn't have enough threads in the space and so the texture didn't show up very well um and that's something i learned afterwards once i got it off the loom um so i'd like to give it a go again and um try and do it properly because you know you do something once and you don't do it well, and then it's easy to just give up. But I would like to do a nice twill because I really like um, how, you know, I just like the diagonal lines that you get from it. Um, it's a really nice weave pattern, but still quite simple. Um, and because I'm on a rigid heddle loom here, I'm sort of limited in the weaving patterns I can do. Um, you know, I'm not going to be doing anything really fancy. So I've got a second heddle kit um, attached on here, which means that I can do slightly more complex weaves. But um, this one I'm just doing a plain weave, so it's nice and straightforward to get myself back into it um, and show off these lovely greens. I'm just going to weave a while and you can watch.
this one is some hand spun alpaca. So the grey in this yarn is um, the natural colour of the alpaca. And then there's some green in there, which I dyed and then blended up on the carder. Um, and it's got a lovely soft fluffy texture to it. It's not a particularly tight spin. Um, and so it's got some nice airiness, which means that it'll drape really nicely when this is finished. So it's just going to be a big sort of wrap or like large scarf stole thing. Um, and hopefully it'll be really cozy. So this green here is a single, um, it's rather terrible yarn, it's all inconsistent and lumpy. Um, it is my second ever hand spun yarn, um, so the fibre was dyed by Rachel Brown of Porpoise Fur. I bought one of her spindle kits in my local yarn shop, a yarn story in Bath. Um, that was about three years ago, just over three years ago. Um, and needless to say, my spinning has progressed a fair bit since then. Um, but, you know, this yarn, although it's not the best, it still has a really nice texture to it. and it works really prettily in this weave so it's nice to find I, would, I wouldn't knit with it because it wouldn't be strong enough um, and I wouldn't use it for warp when weaving um, but using it like this for the weft is really nice
Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Um, if you're a regular viewer, thank you so much for joining me again. If this was your first episode, thank you very much for coming along, giving me some of your time. And I really hope you've enjoyed the podcast and that you'll be back for more. Um, I release episodes once a month, towards the end of the month, uh, usually on a Thursday. This one's slightly out of sync because I'm going to be away. And so yes, if you want to keep up with future episodes, you can subscribe. Uh, you can also go to my website, which I'll link below, and sign up for my newsletter, which sort of alternates. So you get a newsletter, and then two weeks later a podcast, and then two weeks later a newsletter, later a newsletter. Um, I'm also on Instagram, posting fairly regularly, and Ravelry, where you can find my patterns and things. Um, and until next time, I will leave you with a footage of nice walk. Bye. Mm -hmm.